we are talking about derived classes with resources. Uh, <clears throat> so let's see what we want to do. So we had classes with resources, and when, when we said when we have classes with resources, we need to make sure that the resources that are outside of the class are taken care of is the, if the class is assigned or copied. Remember the rule of three, that you have to implement the copy constructor, you have to implement the copy assignment, and you have to have a proper virtual default, uh, sorry, virtual destructor to, to make sure that rule of three work properly. Are we all okay with this? That's what we did. Well, the question comes in to us that what we're going to do if I have derived classes with resources, then how the copying and assignment will actually happen. What's going to be the situation? For that, <clears throat> I, um, uh, I'm going to create uh, a base class, okay? So I'm creating a class called base, and that base class of mine, all it does is just printing messages so we can track and see how things are happening, so we can, how things happen, so we can understand it. So what I will do over here is creating um, um, uh, a constructor that receives the data. So base is simple class that it has a data over it. That's all, okay? And it has a constructor that receives data and defaults it to one. Um, I'm initializing the M data to the value in the initialization area. And um, when this is happening, I simply print uh, defaulting base. So we can actually trace it and see what happens. That's the... Uh, the regular constructor. Then we are going to add to this one uh, a, a copy constructor. Obviously, I don't need a copy constructor because this class doesn't have any resources. But I'm doing it just to test stuff and know. We assume, we, we uh, pretend that this class has actually dynamic memory in it, and we treat it that way. We don't need to. We just treat it to see how things work. So <clears throat> my copy constructor gets the data of B and puts it to the data of mine, which is copying actually uh, another base class. And, and in the process, it's going to print base copy and a space after. So we know, and it goes to new line. Are we OK? Count to this? OK? Uh, and we can actually print the data over here, too. It's not a bad idea to actually show the data to see what is uh, with, with what type of a thing we are having. So in here, I'm going to have base copy, and it copies and it copied M data. So I'm going to add M data over here. So, so we see base with what value is being copied. Obviously, because I want to have the rule of three over here, I will create uh, a copy assignment too. <coughs> and my copy assignment works exactly the same thing. So base is <coughs> assigning to the M data value. So that is being assigned. Obviously, it returns the current reference of the object. It receives a constant base, sets the, uh, the data of what we have to the data of the base is copying, and it just says it's a base assignment. That's what we are doing. Or, yeah, <clears throat> that's that. So, um, and uh, to, to make sure that we know when it's destroyed, I'm going to create, as usual, a virtual destructor for it. And <clears throat> Create the standard uh, uh, print uh, function to print the object. So it actually uh, prints B and puts the data over here so we know that the base with this value is getting printed. And uh, what I'm going to do is overloading O string. So this actually can be printed using CN and CF. So, and that's actually. These two are actually what you're doing in your, uh, in your uh, Milestone 3 uh, POSIO uh, interface. So you, in this print thingy over here is called write, and this is how you do it. So, so this, they are all standard, OK? That's why I told you it's going to take you 15 minutes to do it, literally, OK? So then I'm going to create main over here, int main. Return zero. Now I can actually create a base over here and set it to say 25. And I can say C out B and get out. And I run the program. 
so to see how it's actually being printed and if everything's good, this is what I'm going to have. So what happens, it says, <clears throat> instead of default, I should say create. Create base. OK, so, so it's going to be create base. So create base 25, that's where it gets created over here. And then uh, B25 is printed, which is the printout of B25 we did over here. And then when the object goes off uh, scope in main, the destructor is called, and that's deleting the base. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? One more time, just to have the proper messaging coming up with create. So. Line 31 creates base. Line 32 prints base B25. Line 34 is where base is being deleted and going out of scope. Now that we have done this, uh, let's see what happens when I have it the right one. So what I will do in here is this. I'm going to create a derived class out of base. <coughs> so. What the devil is this? I think I... Yeah. So, <clears throat> oh, I know what it is. All right. So now I have a derived class over here, as you see. And in derived class of mine, I'm going to have a print to print the thing out. And I have a destructor that deletes the derived. So in the derived, I did not do the rule of three. The derived class of mine does not have a copy constructor. It doesn't have uh, uh, a copy assignment. All it does, the derived has a, a float m data, which is a floating point number, and it receives a data. And I have like 2.2 over there. And let's put one over here. So it, it did, I did put one over there, right? Yeah. So and in the initialization area, it says when you are creating the derived one, pass the integer port portion of data to the base. So base will hold the, the integer part, which is 2, in this case if it's defaulted. And uh, uh, it sets the m data of its own to the value of the floating point number. And it indents with three uh, spaces and says, I am creating. So in here, I'm going to say create derived with m data. OK? Printing, uh, it overrides the print of the base um, because that's a virtual, so the latest version is going to be called. First, it's going to print the base, and then it's going to print its own value. So we can see exactly what do we have. And at the end, it says delete the derive with M data, whatever it, the data was inside. OK? So now, in here, I can have something like uh, derived D, and I can say C out D, and I can go, uh, that's it. OK? So if I run this program now, obviously, based on what we learned before, this is what's going to happen. So when the derive is actually instantiated, because it's defaulted, 2.2 will go to data. The integer portion of the data will go to base, which is 2. And 2.2 will be initializing m data. All right? 
then I'm going to say creating the arrive and data. Okay? So the sequence is like this. First, it creates the base because the derived is created with two only. All right? You okay with this? Then it shows I'm creating the derived. Then it prints the value of derived. I didn't overload anything for it because it's already overloaded up there for that, because it's already overloaded here. <clears throat> and print is virtual. I don't need to overload anything for this one. OK? So when I actually say C out D, I'm going to walk through it so you can see. It actually passes D to the, uh, to the uh, print function. And because it is virtual, the latest version will be called, and so on and so forth. You know all that. OK? So it's got to print it. And then as you see, the destruction is in reverse. You see that the destruction is reversed. It's created the base, then the derive over it, prints it. But when it dies, first the derive dies, and then the base. Why? Because we made it virtual. The latest version is called first. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? So let's walk through it one more time to see what's going on here. Uh, I didn't mention over here what am I delete base and that okay <clears throat> so all right so let's start so it, one goes over here and this one comes over here So derive is getting created. It comes over here. Data will be 2.2. Oops, say lazy. I went a little too fast. One more time. So, <clears throat> so it comes over here. Derive wants to get created, but before the derive gets created, the base has to get created. So the constructor goes to base, passing the integer value of data to here. So data will be 2. Therefore, we're going to create base 2. Now that the base is created, the drive continues to get created, and therefore the value of data will be set to 2.2. Please notice that we have this extra 5 over there. That's float. And then it says, uh, uh, let's uh, uh, print the, uh, what I'm creating. So it's going to create the drive for 2.2. And that's the, the constructor being called. And then it calls C out when we set C out because uh, the operator is overloaded for the base, and base is the parent of derive. It works with that one too. So when you are printing, D goes over here. Now I have a base reference that is pointing to a derive. Therefore, print over here will be the latest version of the print to be called because it's virtual. Because of that, it goes to. Because of that, it goes to the print of uh, the derived. And over there first, it prints the base. And then it prints itself and comes out. Now, when we get to the end of the function, the object D is going to get destroyed because virtual, the, 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 um, uh, because of the it's actually not because of virtuality. There's, virtuality doesn't work over here because D is derived. But anyways, uh, D is going to get deleted. Because it gets deleted, uh, th the destructor will be called, uh, which is the first one. <clears throat> so um, yeah, the, the derived got to get uh, deleted first, and then the base, and everything's gone. So <clears throat> are we OK down to this point? Are we OK? Yes. You're talking about these? Just the second portion. The second portion. Yeah. <clears throat> we said that the initialization area, anything that belongs to derive can get initialized. And it has to be in the same order that they are placed in here. You comma separate them. So if I had another thing over here, I could put another comma and initialize that one too. So the comma over here is essentially separating the, 
the, the, the, the properties, the attributes of the derive. The very first thing that the derive is, is that the derive is a base, correct? Therefore, the first thing you initialize is the base. <clears throat> I did it that old-fashioned way. You can actually do it like this, too, if it makes more sense. It's the same. It doesn't make any difference. Okay? So I'm initializing the base with the integer portion of data. Therefore, base is created. Now the next attribute is m data. So first I do base, then I do m data. And if I had a third one, a comma, third, comma, fourth, it would go like that, okay? <clears throat> Obviously, a traditional way of doing it, like if we, you may see uh, it done like this, which is perfectly valid. So you can have it like this again, as you see. And... So this, the, the top line is old C++, this one is new C++. But they both work perfectly. And I mean exactly the same. We good? Yes. Mm -hmm. 33 or 34? Okay. Mm-hmm. Nothing would happen because compiler automatically casts it. F, it's like you're saying float a is equal to 2. Or integer a is equal to 2.5. What happens? Compiler always tries to cast, right? I just put the integer over there to tell to everyone it is going to get cast. I'm kind of giving a message. But if you don't put it, nothing would happen. It, it works exactly the same way. And one thing that I want to ask you, beg you to do when you go home, please take this code and rip it apart. Start changing it and see what happens. Like when questions like that happens, the best way is to actually go change it, see if it, if it makes any difference. Okay, when you go home, to, to try to, to uh, make it, do an experiment with this. Are we okay down to this point? <clears throat> so, so. The whole point of what I did over here is to actually test and see what happens. So because I am assuming that base has some dynamic data in it, I have rule of three over here, and I derived a class out of this one. I inherited the class out of this one, and that inherited class of mine does, did not apply rule of three. Let's see if rule of three are going to be called if I do not mention it in the derive. Let's see what happens. So in here, what I'm saying is this. Oops, I should do it like this. Stop. <clears throat> so say I have something like this. Instead of printing the derived thingy, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write over here void prn, and in here I'm going to say uh, derived uh, DER, or uh, what do I call it? DR, okay? And in here I'll go C out, DR, and L. We know that if anything's passed by value, it has to get copied, correct? Now let's see if the copying actually happens properly or not. So, <clears throat> so in here I'm going to put some value to know exactly what happens. So I'll put 1, 2, 3.456 an obvious value, okay? <clears throat> and then uh, in here, I'm going to say PRN, and I put D. So now what happens over here is that when D is being passed over here, because it's passed by value, DR will be a copy of D, right? Let's see what happens. So when I actually run this, Okay, I don't want anything yet. When I actually run this, this is what happens. So first of all, the constructor is called, we know that happens. I create a base, I create a derive. The base is created with the integer part, and the derive has the float thing. We okay with this? Now, we are at the moment that D is being passed by value to DR. So in here, 
actually the function will be called like this, PRN DR derived. DR is equal to D. That's how the function is called, correct? Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to one argument constructor. And one argument constructor of DR is the copy constructor that is not implemented. Do we appreciate this? Okay. Now when I actually do this and I go up over here, see what happens. Sorry, it's re recompiling and adding that comment thing. As you see, it actually went to the copy constructor of the base. So the copy constructor of the base was actually being called. And the value is actually copied. So the rule of three is applied for the derived one no matter what, even if I did not implement it. So now that the copying happened, dr is a copy of derived, and it prints the value. And as you see, everything is fit perfectly, which means the dumb copy of derived happened, and the smart copy of base happened too. What is a dumb copy? Member-wise copy. Byte-wise copy. They call it like that, which means you have two classes, you, and you have two, uh, two object, objects of the same class, and you copy one into another. If it doesn't have copy construct and a copy assignment created, it literally byte by byte copies everything from one to another, right? Because the right did not have the copy constructed, that's what we expected to happen. But compiler recognizes that the parent has a copy constructor, so first it, con it calls the constructor of the parent following the rule of three, then copies the extra stuff by itself blindly using member-wise copy. Okay? So essentially what I mean is that, and let's continue with the, with the execution, as you see now we are in here, that the DR thing is going to die. So it goes to the destructor and deletes the, uh, the derived one. So this is actually the copy dying right now. Okay? So the copy that DR dies, then it comes out to main, and now the original will die. Are we okay? So what did we get from this? And it, and it happens with assignment too. If I have over here <coughs> A, and I write over here A is set to D, and this time I'm going to say C out A, okay? If I actually do something like this, the outcome is exactly like the other one, which means when you look at, let me just put some separators over here so we see what's happening over here. So, I'm going to go see out like that so we can actually see. Okay, so I'm putting every event in a separator so we can exactly see what is running when. So first, the both objects are created as you see. That's line number 50 over here. Okay, then PRN copies D using a copy. Yeah, prints D using a copy. So first it copies, then it's printed, then the copy dies. That's 52. 54, D gets, A gets assigned to D. And as you see, the base assignment is actually invoked. Obviously, the rest of it, the rest uh, that is the members of the derived one, they are copied blindly, okay? And then the next thing we are going to do over here is uh, printing the A. And when A is printed, as you see, both values are perfectly copied and everything is, is good. So the assignment was successful, and at the end they die. What is the conclusion of what we, what we did? Uh, the conclusion is that when you, ha you don't need to care when you are deriving a class, you don't need to care if the class has resources outside of it, is the class, is, if the base class is uh, dynamically allocating stuff or it has rule of three or not. Freely inherit it and everything will work perfectly.
That's the first thing. So if the base class has rule of three applied, you derive a class out of it, you don't need to care. You don't need to do anything. Everything will work perfectly. You do not need to do any rule of three for the derived one if you don't need it. Are we okay with this? Okay. And that's why I'm saying milestone four will be easy. Because milestone four, if it doesn't have dynamic memory allocation in it, then you don't need to care about rule of three. Right? All right. So next thing we're going to do over here, so I'm going to save this one as a uh, derived with no rule of Three, okay? Now what I'm going to do is this. I am going to actually implement, a, like pretending that, that the derived one has something in it too. If I do that, it's exactly like creating a constructor for a, for a class, okay? If you need a default constructor for a class, if you need a default constructor for a class and nothing else, do you need to implement the default constructor? No, because it does it automatically, right? So if the default constructor is not uh, like you don't, you want, every, you want a class to just get created, you don't need to create any constructors for it. But as soon as you create a single constructor, then it's your responsibility to implement default constructor or not. Remember this? So default constructor, you don't need to implement if you don't need any constructors. But as soon as you define any type of constructor, then you need to take care of everything yourself. OK? It's the same thing almost in here, which means <clears throat> if you are creating a, constructor, a copy constructor over here, if you are creating a copy constructor over here, and in this copy constructor, you are saying, <coughs> in the copy constructor, <coughs> you are actually saying m data is set to d dot m data. So that's what I'm copying, right? And then what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say c out <coughs> um, copy derived m data. Right? That's what I'm doing. So that's my, <clears throat> that's my uh, copy constructor, correct? So let's, follow, let's do the exact same thing. And in here, I'm going to remove the assignment stuff that I do not need. And I'm going to have this, OK? So and I'm going to remove that one. So now. Ladies and gentlemen, I created a copy constructor for my derived class. Do whatever I want to do with the derived one, right? As soon as I do this, what we need to, what we expect the, uh, the B to have, because it's actually setting it to 1, 2, 3, I want the base to be 123, the whole part. But if I actually compile and run this, you will see that base is 1. It did not copy the base. So if you are deriving, if you are inheriting a class that has the rule of three implemented, and you are, too, applying the rule of three to your derived class, to your inherited class, you have to make sure to tell the compiler how to copy the base. Otherwise, because you did not mention how, what constructor would be called for the base? In here, I actually passed the integer to the constructor of the base, right? So one argument constructor of base was called. In this constructor, I did not mention how. Because I didn't mention how, what happens? When you don't mention how to create an object, how the object gets created using the fault constructor. And that's exactly what happened. 
It defaulted the base to that one. If I want to do anything, I have to mention. One of the easiest way of doing it is to literally uh, uh, pass the object. So in here, say, call the base constructor <clears throat> and pass D to it. So I'm saying, pass the derived object to base. Does base have a constructor that receives a derived one? No. But it's inherited. Derive is a base. By definition, when you inherit a class, the new class is the old class. A motorcycle is a bicycle with an engine. Therefore, when you are actually passing the derived object to the copy constructor of the base, the base receives it as a base reference, and therefore, it copies the base part. So the standard way, if you don't have any special thing, to make sure that the default, that the base of a class is actually copied properly, is to call the base class's copy constructor right in here. OK? Are we OK? Or you could have do, done something else. I could say over here d.mdata, not to call the copy constructor. Call the regular constructor of base. I could do that. No problem. You can call any constructor in here in the initialization area. Don't forget, copy constructor is not a special thing. It's just the constructor. So you can do anything you want in here to copy the base the way you want it to be. So even if I pass the data over here, in this case, so if I run this now, if I run this now, you will see that <clears throat> when the object is actually being copied, it calls the regular constructor of data, and it creates the base, and then copies the derived. But still, the outcome is good for me. Or I could actually decide not to do that and just pass the, uh, the entire object to the constructor of base. If I did that, then what would happen will be the fact that the copy constructor now will be called. Now it actually copies the base and then copies the derive. The safest way. If you don't know what to do, just pass the reference of the object to the copy constructor of the base. That's the safest way. Because if the constructor is applied, it will call it. If it's not applied, it will do a member-wise copy and everything is good. And it's the exact same thing with the assignment operator. For with the assignment operator, but assignment operator, because it's a function, you cannot uh, it doesn't have an initialization area. You have to manually do whatever you want to do, which is essentially calling the operator equal of the base class. You could do that, right? And then set it so in here, um, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have something like, uh, <clears throat> how do I write? I'm going to write. How do I write it? Base assigned, and here I'm going to call the right assign. One, two, three. <clears throat> so when you are doing an assignment operator, you have to manually call the base as assignment operator. If you don't, the base is not going to get copied. It's not going to be copied. So you have to manually call it. <clears throat> I see people do this. Please don't. Okay? Please don't do that. Okay? That's wrong. What happens if you do this? Can anybody tell me? Will this work? You are creating a nameless base out of this, and you're setting that one. And after that, the base is going to die. Nothing's going to be set in my object. You follow? Don't do that. Call the assignment operator manually. All right, so that's that. 
And now if I actually run it and I have the assignment happening over here, I'll be okay. There is nothing wrong with that. So um, bringing it, the code from the other one, not to type it again. Just going to put it like this. Now that the assignment operator is overloaded, when it actually gets to it, so what happened? Okay, <clears throat> there we go. So when it reaches to the assignment operator, it actually goes to the assignment operator of the derive, but first calls the basis operator assignment and assigns it, and then after that, does the assignment over here, and therefore everything is called and is done perfectly. Are we okay? So the whole point of writing all these things is to tell you, when you inherit a class, inherit a new class out of an old one, out of a base one, always take a look and see if for the current class you need rule of three or not. If the, for, it, for the current class you do not need rule of three, relax. Don't do anything. No rule of three. Do it. Implement it as it's supposed to be. It doesn't matter how the base class is created. Everything's going to run smoothly. Okay? But if you do have to implement the rule of three for the inherited class, then you have to make sure that you take care of everything of the base class too. You have to think of how the base class is supposed to get uh, copied. If you don't know how the base class is set and done, then simply go by standard, which means call the copy constructor of the, of the parent of the base class and pass the reference, and call the assignment operator of the base class and pass it, and you'll be fine. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? No? All right. So uh, that's, oh, well, that's uh, um, what we needed to do for today. And uh, there's nothing else to cover. And I say it's going to be a short one. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Uh, please, uh, I'm going to uh, push the code right now. Last week is there, isn't it? Oh, last week, oh, last week, 